My name is Jared Nimi. Uh, I'm an associate professor in the statistics department at Iowa State University. And this is my brief uh, bit of research talk for incoming graduate students to the Department of Statistics. First off, uh, we're living in strange times. We're living in uh, the time of this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, an event that will shape a number of our lives, an event that is a bigger event than uh, pretty much anybody living has gone through. Um, so I want to first say, keep yourself safe, right? Uh, take care of loved ones. Uh, we're going to be needing to stay quarantined or uh, social distancing for quite a while now to get through this until we have uh, vaccines and so forth that uh, would allow us to handle what's going on as a society. So do keep yourself safe. With that being said, I do a bit of research on infectious diseases. I've been to the CDC to talk about seasonal influenza and the models that we use to forecast it. So this is this time we're living in is of uh, research interest to me. Uh, on the background there that you see right now is a visualization of confirmed case data. Um, you can see if you go to shinyapps.org slash apps slash corona. This particular dashboard here is written in Shiny, which is a package for the R statistical software. So in case you're familiar with that, you can uh, take a look at the code they use to construct this and so forth. The, uh, the, the data are not looking good for the US right now, right? It's gonna be a while where we're in this sort of lockdown uh, state. Uh, if you're looking for something to do while we're in this lockdown state, your home uh, and your uh, can't figure out what else to do, you could help work with this project or another project. So this right here, this project you can get to by going to GitHub. So here is the GitHub account. So nice bread is the user account and the repository is called Corona in case you're used to using uh, Git and GitHub. Uh, and there are a number of issues. I posted an issue yesterday or two days ago uh, about how the interactive plot disappears when you change the target variable. So if you watch the plot here, uh, I was supposed to select QuickTime and make it always on top. So there we go. Uh, so if you select a different target variable right here, cumulative cases, you want to say cumulative desk because you're a bit morbid at the moment. Uh, and the plot just disappears. Uh, the plot disappears because for whatever reason, the countries to display gets unselected here when you change the target variable. And so if you want to help out on that issue, feel free to uh, pull out your R coding capabilities and see if you can uh, fix that particular issue. Um, for me, this is actually a, a very personal situation. I was actually on sabbatical at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, not even three weeks ago, and I was recalled back to the US. I have a wife and two kids, they're nine and 11, and we were essentially forced to pack up in two days and drive halfway across the country uh, to a house that uh, we can't go to because it's rented out for the year because I was on sabbatical. And so essentially the university made me homeless. Uh, if you can tell, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but anyway, uh, on brighter notes. Uh, so my name is Jared Nimi. I do Bayesian statistics. If you're interested in what Bayesian statistics are and you're not familiar, you could head to my YouTube channel. So here's my YouTube channel. Uh, in particular here, I have my whole playlist of videos from one year when I taught the introduction to Bayesian statistics that we teach at Iowa State. The course is STAT 544. And so that's the 544 playlist here, which right now is identical to the Bayesian inference playlist. Uh, although I was expecting to expand the Bayesian inference playlist at some point. In particular, there's a video in there called the Bayesian statistics. So you can go through that video. These are not the most exciting videos. It's like you're sitting there in class, except you don't get to interact, but it might give you some information about what Bayesian statistics is. Um, one aspect of Bayesian statistics is uh, computational. So if you've heard of Markov Chain Monte Carlo, we use that quite a bit. So I have another video on Mo Markov Chain Monte Carlo, but this one's a little more interesting uh, video on a particular technique of, Monte of MCMC called Gibbs sampling. So you could take a look at that if you're interested. Uh, I also do a lot of applied work. So I work with groups on campus at Iowa State University. I work with the Monarch Conservation Consortium that's trying to uh, build habitat and track information about uh, the butterfly monarchs that are in the state and that move through the state. So I work with that group. I work a bit more with this group 
that uh, is called STRIPS, uh, that stands for Science-Based Trials of Row Crops Integrated with Prairie Strips. And in fact, what they're suggesting is that farmers plant within their agricultural row crop fields that are typically in Iowa, corn and soy, that they plant strips of prairie along the contour so that as water flows down the contour, uh, it gets uh, sort of caught by that prairie strip and the nutrients that are in that water go into the soil rather than getting washed uh, off the property, off the field, uh, in addition to the nutrients, uh, soil. So we have individuals uh, at Iowa State University who've estimated that Iowa loses a billion dollars a year in soil. And that brings me to the next group. So this uh, group, Seed Change, uh, it's a new group on campus, uh, and it's trying to develop the science that we need to to go to a next generation of agriculture. And it includes things like strips and other techniques that we can use to minimize the impact that farming has on the environment and improve uh, soil in Iowa, improve uh, rural economies, uh, improve the social aspect of farming as well. The individual that I mentioned before who estimated that we lose a billion dollars a year in soil is uh, in charge of this daily erosion project. So there's kind of a cool project that if you click on the view the map button, you can get a, a map of Iowa and surrounding areas. I'm going to uh, switch this, if I can, over here to, uh, where is it, top, top one, go to Iowa. And then even when this comes up, I like the map to be a little bit bigger. So when it comes up, I will, I guess, move my picture so that I can click on, oh, there it is, right here. Make Iowa a bit bigger, maybe. We'll see if it reacts. Uh, there we go. All right, so this uh, particular map shows you precipitation uh, every day. Every day it does. So it shows you precipitation and then more importantly, soil runoff. Uh, and then, actually, sorry, that's water runoff. And then hill slope soil loss. So this soil loss is essentially soil that's been lost to the field. This particular day today, which is what, April 3rd, is not all that informative. So I'm going to choose another day here that I know something interesting happened. Uh, if we go back to September, maybe, come on work. Okay, there we go. If we go back to September around 28th, and then I'm going to actually go up here to precipitation so you can see that, uh, there we go. Um, maybe not, come on, there we go, there's the precipitation. So we had quite a bit of precipitation compared to normal. And on that day, we also had quite a bit of soil loss, especially down in the southern part of the state. Um, all right, so why am I showing this? I'm showing you this because uh, this is one of my uh, research projects at the moment that I'm most interested in. The research project is basically to try to reproduce the map that you're seeing, but without the computational cost that's involved with creating this map. So this particular map, which I mentioned is created every day, takes about six hours to produce. That is six hours spent on a computer running. Uh, those six hours are spent primarily in running a computer model that can predict the amount of soil loss that you're seeing. And it predicts that based off of uh, precipitation, other weather variables, uh, but also uh, elevation of the fields and the slope on the fields and what those fields are being used for. And so the simulation runs about 200,000 simulations for the state of Iowa in order to produce the maps that you're seeing here. Uh, and the group that's working on this would like to expand. They would in fact like to make a map like this for the entire earth. And now if you can imagine trying to scale up the computation from Iowa to the whole earth, uh, they just don't have enough computational power to do that say on a daily basis. And so what we're interested in doing is creating a um, computer, a, a statistical model, sometimes in the context of this computer model piece, it's called an emulator. So we're interested in building an emulator for this uh, model. I guess I skipped a step. What I should have said is that those 200,000 runs that are done are actually running what is called this water erosion prediction project. So right here, water erosion prediction project, uh, which is a United States Department of Agriculture product and it is the actual underlying engine that will do that prediction. And so they run this model 200,000 times. And what we're interested in doing is building a statistical model that will be able to predict what this model is actually going to tell you and do it in a much faster time frame than this model can. 
and then we're interested in producing a map like this for Iowa, but more broad geographical regions uh, that looks the same. We will probably need to encounter uncertainty. That is because we're not actually running the model. We will be uncertain in terms of our predictions. And so we would like a map that shows you that uncertainty. And hopefully that un uncertainty has certain properties like it's the it's not too bad anywhere, for instance. Um, to do this, we, I, uh, am using a computer model called a Gaussian process model or a Gaussian process regression model. This is a model that's commonly used in uh, machine learning for other uses, but here we're going to apply it to a computer model. Um, so I don't have any videos yet about Gaussian process regression models, but you can feel free to Google it uh, or search on YouTube and you'll probably find some information. So this is the one piece that I'm most interested in. It's a bit interesting right now because there are so many inputs. There are um, inputs that are continuous. Those are fairly easy to deal with. There's inputs that are categorical. Those are more difficult. There are inputs that are functional inputs. So if you think of the slope of a hill, right? So you've got the slope of a hill. That's really a function. Or if you think of a precipitation profile over the course of a day. So here's when the precipitation happened. That's another function. These functions are technically infinite dimensional, although they have a finite representation in the software, but that finite representation is extremely complex. And so you can get many different shaped curves uh, that go into producing these pictures. And uh, the software, the statistical model that we're constructing needs to be able to handle all of those and produce reasonable results. Uh, so that's what I'm most excited about right now, what I'm interested in uh, having students to uh, work on with me. Uh, if you're interested at all in this, you could also talk to Luis Damiano, who is a second year graduate student in the statistics department, uh, as he and I are working together and he is very familiar with this kind of thing and can also talk about uh, what it might be the work might be like to work with me. Anyway, as I was mentioning before, please uh, stay safe. Um, Take care of yourselves. Hope to see you next year.